Hey guys, and welcome to Paladin Comics' first video documenting our first, uh, well, actually one of probably many hauls. Uh, this is our first legit video covering what we actually purchased at an estate sale. So we're gonna go through each item, kind of go through the lot. The backstory on this was, it was a purchase done where a grandson was helping his grandfather sell off his um, household items. And luckily I was the second person to visit the estate. Well, it's a living estate. And um, he allowed me to go through the entire house. Mind you, awesome kid. The grandfather was actually very nice. Very nice gentleman. He was active duty at one point. Uh, a lot of respect for those who serve. But the house was so dirty. Very dirty. So when you dig, when you look for estate stuff, sometimes you have to put yourself out there a little bit and have to deal with a certain degree of little ick, you know, to make things happen. But this is a haul from that estate sale. So we're gonna go through and I know the basic price on most of the items, I'm kind of familiar with it. A little bit of background. Um, I run Finish Line Hobbies on eBay and I've been a reseller for probably about almost 18 to 20 years now. And just decided that recently it'd be kind of cool to actually document my hauls and to share that with you guys. So anyway, welcome to the channel. This is our first uh, documented haul video. So we're gonna go through each item and I'll show you them and give you a price and we'll start doing that. Hey guys, so we're gonna go ahead and do a review of what we purchased in the estate. And I'll go ahead and price out each item as we go through it. So to start off with, um, just to let you know, it was an elderly gentleman in his late 70s. Um, he is selling his home here in Phoenix, and he decided to have his grandson help him sell off everything. So just going through some items, some things that you wouldn't expect would have value, but these are vintage Aurora plastic model boxes. Now they don't have the actual model, but the boxes themselves are still worth money in nice shape. So each one of these boxes is worth about $10 to $15, just to let you know. And you can identify it by looking at the uh, roar. You can tell by the age of the box. Even a little bit of damage doesn't make a big difference. These are still worth money. Next item up, which I usually don't buy because I don't buy anything Barbie related. However, we have Ricky by Mattel. This is from 1959, I believe 1959. He's in the box with his guitar, and he's worth about $50 to $60. So kind of cool. That's the original shirt. That is in a different uh, getup. I usually don't buy this kind of these kind of items, but it was there, and it was part of a lot. Uh, next item up, I'll just go through each item. I can, tell, I can tell you the pricing as we go through. So next item up is a Star Wars Episode One NASCAR. Now what may, now usually with die cast, you gotta be careful when you buy. You have to buy limited um, ones that are made in, they're all made in limited numbers at some point, but ones that are made in lower, lower quality numbers and ones that have a theme. Like this is Star Wars Episode One. What you wanna look for is, is it still wrapped and the paper. And that means it's probably never being removed. This one. Don't mind you, I'm outside. This one has not been removed, but it's Star Wars Episode One. So that's pretty awesome. Um, these are not worth a ton. These are usually worth about 15 to 25 at the most. Uh, this time they sell these is around Christmas time. Uh, Diecast does not always bring good money. It has to be vintage. It has to be something that's a limited run. Uh, action collectibles used to be based here in Arizona. So if you look, it's from 1999 when episode one came out. It's a limited run. It's a limited edition and it's a Jeff Gordon car, which helps. There is your action logo. So that's what you want to look for. Other die cast to look for is like Exoto, Kyosho, um, 
sometimes uh, other brands bring money. You just have to look. These are super awesome. I found these on the way out. I'm gonna angle this down a little bit better. These I saw on the way out. These are mini Tycos. These are from the 90s. Mini, Ty mini Bandit. So the full size Bandit's worth a lot of money. I have never seen the mini version. So this was actually kind of cool. I got these for the pair for 20 bucks. I think each one's probably gonna be worth about 20 to 30, even without the transmitter, which would be pretty easy to find because most of the Tyco 27 megahertz transmitters are all the same. Just a basic two channel transmitter. The batteries, you can usually um, buy a replacement battery off, battery off eBay. You might even be able to get away with a modern lithium polymer battery. Um, next items up, Matchbox. So how do you look for old school Matchbox? So you look for ones that are in the box. This is pre-carded Matchbox. These are made in the UK also, which is pretty awesome. So if you open it up, you can usually tell right away if it's been used or not or played with. But here is the Harley Davidson on the trailer. So kind of cool. Uh, these are worth the Harley Davidson on the trailer. It's worth about 30. If you look right there, you can see worth about 30. You can tell the age, just the, the type of box it is. Uh, that these are from the 70s or late early 70s. This particular style box was more of the 80s into the 90s. They still make them in this style box, but very, very few. You mostly see the carded stuff at like Walmart and Target. Moving on, there's kind of a random box of stuff. So he was a plastic model builder, which is really cool because you can usually find stuff that kind of relates to that. Model building supplies, um, plastic models in the box. Here's some build stuff now. <clears throat> Plastic models are not always worth something, okay? But if they're vintage as parts, they can still be sold as a lot. So here is a um, Honda. That's not a Honda, that's actually a uh, Nissan, I believe. No, it's a Ferrari, actually. That's a Ferrari. You have yourself a junkyard Bronco. Isn't that cool? This one's actually not bad. The, just the wheels are missing. So stuff like this can actually be restored to a modeler that can't you can't buy the kit anymore. It'd be worth buying these. And you, all these cars here, like this Datsun's actually not that bad. It wasn't built that well. There's no paint on it. It's kind of a sloppy build. But these are still worth money. You could sell all of the cars as a lot for probably about 25 to 30. Look at that, it's a Ford Taurus. <laughs> Check that out. That's how most Ford Tauruses actually look now from this era. You know, hood is off, might have a wheel missing, it's up on blocks in someone's yard. <laughs> um, and then what's cool in here is that there's actually 135th scale military. That is 135th. This is, um, the windscreen is not, this doesn't go to this. But this is 135th scale. This is an army duck. Um, it is missing parts, so this would be a good diorama piece, maybe. I'd probably worth about five bucks on eBay, ten if you're lucky. But probably made by Tamiya or uh, Hasegawa or Dragon. Um, and the last item in this box is actually really, really cool. This is a half-track German army carrier, armor personnel carrier from World War II. A little bit bigger. This is 148th, so 148th scale. It is complete. Most of them don't have any engine detail. This is actually motorized too, which is kind of cool. If you look, you can see the gear down on the top, right there. So this actually moves on its own. And you can take the whole top half off to get to look down below. That's where the battery goes, the nine volt, or double A's it looks like in this case. <clears throat> so pretty ingenious, pretty awesome. That will actually bring decent money. That piece is worth 
probably about 30 to 50, and it's because it's motorized, that's why. So don't mind the noise, guys. I have the garage door open. It's beautiful outside today. Uh, some other items from the lot. This was pretty awesome. This is a really cool find in the lot and very unexpected. Um, this is from, uh, I think, Aurora. These are Aurora Thunder Jets. So Aurora T-Jets. These are slot cars from the uh, mid-60s. These are super cool, and they're in beautiful condition too. That is a Corvette, a yellow Corvette. You can always tell by looking at the underside. And this is also a Corvette. Beautiful condition, absolutely, really nice. Um, these can be worth good money. There are quite a few collectors out there that look for these. I have not purchased uh, T-Jets. They call them T-Jets for short, Thunder Jets in quite some time. Now, I didn't shoot video at his house because I didn't want to invade his privacy. Um, as an older gentleman, and the house was pretty dirty, I don't, I just felt kind of weird about it. I didn't even want to do that or attempt it. Next box, I forgot what's in here. Oh, yeah, this is nothing of real, real value, but it's artwork, art um, supplies. So these are cool. Now, sometimes art supplies can be worth money, but I have kids, so I actually donate most of it to them. But check this out. There's some pretty cool, these can all be used for model building, of course. You have some blending brushes, which is great for camouflage work. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have a, <clears throat> this is a, oh, these are the, um, I saw these. These are artist quality sketching crayons, like a whole box. Is that awesome or what? So see these, I can resell these. These would be super easy to sell. See artist sketching crayons. Uh, these are from, they're from, it uh, looks like Europe, from France actually. Uh, but they're made in, made in China. Ah, but you know, they're still worth money. You figure each one is probably worth about five bucks or so, maybe three to five bucks, but that's an easy way, easy item to list on eBay. I'll put a link to our eBay store also in the uh, description down below. Here's another item from that company. Is it Conti? It's black sketching crayons. So that's cool. Comp on this, it's probably 10 bucks, maybe five to 10 bucks somewhere. You know, artist supplies don't bring a lot of money, but they are pretty cool. Um, I used to draw on occasion. See, here's some chalk. So, not chalk, these are pastel, I believe. <clears throat> yeah, pastel crayons. Those are pretty cool. Nice vivid colors. Ooh. Oh, this is cool. Look, watercolors. Oh, this reminds me of my childhood. Oh, remember when you're in art class and they would give you the watercolors and a canvas or even just a piece of paper and you would just go to town. Oh, that was the, that was it, right? Um, some, looks like a calligraphy set. That looks like a calligraphy set maybe, like a handle. Um, we have Ben Fang watercolor brush pens. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. That is really neat. Looks like two of them have been used maybe? You know, being out here in Arizona, something like that might be dried out. Here's another set of the sketching crayons. Let's take a look to see what they look like on the inside. Oh, those are used. No real value there. Something like that you'd probably just give away with, you know, like sell the new set and then throw these in for the buyer. Just someone can get something. Or, you know, this stuff can even be donated. Here's a protractor or a compass, I guess you could say, made in Germany. Ooh, that's kind of cool, actually. Now, when do you see a German-made compass? Look at that. they nice, perfect circles. Wow. Ooh, there, there we go. There's the legit childhood watercolor set from Crayola. <laughs> Some of the stuff I will donate. So, uh, let's see. This is 
Uh, silver gray, I think it's putty. Uh, equal amounts. Yeah, this is uh, modeler's uh, putty for restoration of broken ceramics. So it's probably like putty with glue built into it. Here is more watercolors. Benny and Smith from New York. I remember seeing Benny and Smith when I was growing up because that's where I'm from. I'm not, oh, that is kind of welded shut almost, it feels like. I'm not even gonna try to crank that sucker open. Here's Pastel Painting Set. 24 brilliant colors and ah there, well okay so it's all in pieces it feels like that'll be a oh my gosh if i crack that thing open they're gonna go everywhere oh, another blending brush set these are really nice these are always really great to have when you do camouflage work on uh, plastic models blending brushes are great if you're looking to like create a shadow effect here's a vintage artista watercolors Wow, that's pretty cool. Look at how vintage that is. Nice. Um, oh, look at that. I mean, it looks kind of like, I love that though. It's just kind of cool, check that out. I know it's used in all, but it's kind of got that very vintage feel to it. It's a tin case with a tur turquoise finish. I bet you this was probably made back in the 60s, Benny and Smith from New York, you know, cleaned up. This could probably be worth a tiny bit. Not a whole lot, but it's kind of cool. Oh, here's a really nice, ah, uh, here we go. Um, radiograph, so ultra draw, whatever, waterproof black India ink. Oh, this is pretty neat. I'm not familiar with what this is. Or how to open it properly without breaking it. But it looks like it is a, oh, pressed down, okay. Ah, there we go. Oh, they're like special pens. Probably related to the, um, these are special pens for drawing circles, probably artist pens. That is pretty cool, look at that. That's really neat, I've never seen that before. That's pro Now value on a lot of this stuff, like, that, if I clean up that case, this might be worth about 15 to 20. Take out the nasty Q-tip, which, yeah, that, that'll make it worth a bit more. And there's just some random, these are the pastels from that one box, they all fell out. So, pretty cool. That is pretty awesome. These are the special items we got out of the lot. So take a look at these pressed friction cars from the 60s and late 50s. So what do I say by friction car? It even sounds like the it even sounds like the fire chief's car. Check that out. Is that awesome or what? So these were made in the late 50s, early 60s. These are Japanese made tin pressed cars. Well, they call them pressed metal cars, tin cars. So these are extremely rare in good condition. And so what the, the value behind these is, is the car complete, is not all bent up. How is the paint? It's all about condition. Does the paint look good? Are there any dents? Is it clean? This has the original windshield. It's in beautiful shape. A few minor dents on the bottom, but nothing really of note. So, and then check out this. Check that out. Is that a beauty or what? I showed my friend who was active duty and he goes, holy smoke. He goes, that was the sign that we had on our arm unit that I served in. I'm like, really? So check out that beauty. Is that cool or what? And then we have the infamous Greyhound. So there's a difference between pressed cars. So you have pressed models that have open windows and open wheel wells. They look more like an actual car. And then you have ones where 
it's the whole top is enclosed. It's all one piece of stamped steel. There's no windows or open windows. These are worth more because they look like a legit model. These, now this Greyhound might be worth still a decent amount because it is a Greyhound bus and it's actually in really nice shape. Look at how beautiful that is. They just need a very slight dusting, but that's about it. So we have the Greyhound bus, the army vehicle, fire chief's car, we have an army tank. Is that awesome or what? Check that out. Now, these are very hard to find the exact same model because they changed the designs so often back then. So you figure a rough estimate. Most of these are made by um, the two companies. Um, I forgot the name of the one company, but um, Nomura is one of the toy companies from back then that made these. The tank is also a friction tank. And this one, we don't want to mess with it too much because it is, uh, what, 60 plus years old. So, but it is absolutely beautiful. Now, these are worth anywhere from 100 to about 150 each because of the condition. The Greyhound bus might be worth a little bit less. Uh, it is more common, but the army car and the fire chief car are gonna be the most sought after. And the tank is pretty awesome too. The tank actually does have a moving barrel. It does have gun elevation. <laughs> now this is stamped steel. These are pressed tin, thin steel. This is pressed steel and this is different. So this, um, Wyan Dottie was, I think this was made here in the US, or it was made in, um, it was, I'm pretty sure it was made here in the US. Yes, it does say USA made. So this was made in the US. So the Japanese cars are very hard to come by, but US made stamped steel toys are pretty awesome. Now, this is, very hard to find. I was not able to find a single comp for this on eBay, on WorthPoint, anywhere. I could not find any information about this at all. Um, if you guys happen to find a comp or something, let me know in the comments. But I have not found anything related to this. So even if you can't find pricing on a particular toy, and in this case, the make is actually stamped in the bed, but I can't quite read it. It's very light have to look that up but um oh this is made in the usa <laughs> isn't that kind of cool i mean gosh how many toys toys were made here quite often back then and now there's there are there are there are toy companies here still that make stuff here but it's very niche niche uh let's see some other items that are pretty awesome we found some hats some vintage hats that are in beautiful shape. So 2001 World Champion, World Series Champions Diamondbacks. Ah, uh, this hat kind of has some. Don't mind me, my hands are dusty. This is when they beat my Yankees. It's okay. So, you know, it's the hat's in beautiful shape. It's probably worth about, probably about five to 10 bucks. It is a new era hat. So when you buy hats, you try to look for a new era or um, you know any of the major brands try to stay away from obscure stuff that's not doesn't have a brand name on it here is a um, number 51 diamondbacks randy johnson hat from back then kind of cool i'll have to dust them off again because my hands are so dusty that's probably worth about maybe five to ten bucks too um here's a super cool nba championships champions um Chicago Red Bull, uh, Chicago, Chicago Bulls, not Red Bull, oh my God. So look at that, all the years on it up to 1991. So this hat was made <clears throat> by in 1998, which is pretty cool. And it is a starter hat, so starter and newer. If you happen to find hats made here in the US, you should definitely be all over that. All right, and then we also have a, um, this is a Super Bowl champions, uh, Broncos Super Bowl champion hat from Super Bowl, let's see, that's 
33, and it's still sealed from Lova Athletic. This is pretty awesome. And this is official, it says official locker room cap. So that's kind of cool. Still sealed in the bag, which is pretty awesome. So don't know the comp on this, but I'm gonna say that it's gonna bring in probably, anything like this that's still sealed is probably gonna bring in around 20 to 30, I would assume. You figure most hats are going to be worth about that much. So there are the hats. They were kind of a freebie in the lot. I don't usually buy hats, but if they're that kind of hat, yes, I will buy it. Another awesome item is uh, this is from Mattel. This is Fighting Men. So this is uh, from the 60s. And this is a board game with metal pieces. So this is pretty cool. So check this out. These are cast metal. This is technically pot metal. So what is pot metal? So pot metal is a cheap version of metal. It's a lower grade of steel. So um, this is some type of uh, game and I don't know a whole lot about it, but it's bendable soldiers and permanent plastic. And so you can make combat equipment out of it. So it looks like it's not just a game, but it's actual, you can, oh, you, you mold. So these are the molds actually. Oh, check that out. And this is the first one of these I've ever had. Now I did look up comps on this. It sells a complete like this. It sells for about um, right around, uh, anywhere from 40-ish to 60, maybe a bit higher, but uh, you make actual army men. So instead of just buying the plastic army men back then, apparently you could make them out of uh, different materials. Mostly, uh, looks like, mostly clay material and it hardens. You have a hardener in here. So that's kind of cool actually. Well, I've never had one of these before. I've never seen one before. We also did get some plastic model kits. So we did get some Blue Angels. Three sets of Blue Angels here. And a helicopter model. Yeah, they're worth a little bit. The Blue, An Blue Angels are probably worth, you have three, uh, two actual kits here. Maybe about 10 bucks. The helicopter is a, um, that is a uh, Huey, not a Huey, a um, Apache helicopter kit. No instructions, maybe $5. But you know, stuff like this you don't want to throw away. If you have a good model builder, they could probably still pull it off and actually build it. Also came with a super cool Main Street Classics 3-in-1, uh, let's see, 3-in-1 wooden game set. These are worth about 20 bucks. You can find these on eBay all day long. Pretty common item. Also train items. <clears throat> so we have uh, the Heritage Vintage Collection, Department 56 made by Bachman. So Department 56, I think, was J.C. Penney for their toy department or Macy's. I can't quite remember. So, but Bachman would do special edition. This is one you could buy trains at the at the actual um, department store when you're a kid. So pretty cool, still has the original paperwork. It's full 40 steam. It's not HO, but apparently, I don't know if it actually creates steam. That's one thing that, yes, it actually does. Oh my gosh, that's really cool. So it's a Bachman electric train set. So it's, in, it's basically brand new in the box. I mean, it looks absolutely incredible. Check that out. Is that neat or what? Wow. That is so cool. I love that. It's a Christmas themed holiday train set. So beautiful. Um, you know, something like this hasn't been, it is HO scale actually. So HO is the same, the 440 is the style of uh, locomotive from back then. But it is HO scale. Um, a set like this, probably comp out on eBay somewhere around anywhere from 50 to 100. 
Um, obviously time of year has a big influence over this, so this would sell much better this time of year. Um, you know, who didn't want to set up, you know, a train around your um, Christmas tree when you're a kid, right? God, I always wanted to do that as a kid. We did it actually one year um, a while ago, and uh, it was kind of cool actually. It was pretty neat. It was awesome. And uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have plastic models. We do have more trains. You have an awesome, uh, this is a B, is it a B-17? I think, yeah, this is a, I'm pretty sure this is a B-17. It's a B-17 or a B-26, I can't quite remember. But he actually built the model, the grandfather, and he told me, you know, I felt bad because his health is declining. And he goes, he said, he goes, I felt bad. And I'm, I'm like, I, I, I told him, I said, I, I said, it's beautiful the way it was done. Such a neat piece. It does just need a cleaning, but he actually did a really nice job building it. Look at the detail. It looks really good and it presents nicely. A built model plane like this, um, it, it'll pull in, it, it'll probably pull in about $50 to $80 somewhere in that ballpark. Um, it just needs a slight cleaning, maybe a very light watered down version of um, soapy water is all you need to clean the dust off. There's a little bit of yellowing here and there, but you know, that actually adds to the patina of the plane because I mean, it, it's still really awesome. Look at the detail on that. So cool. Isn't that beautiful? One that I might sell? Maybe, we'll see. Um, I do keep sometimes the items that I sell on occasion, not everything because I would need another house. <laughs> that would just be a little unrealistic to try to keep everything you own. Then you become the hoarder. Some of the plastic models, USS Lionfish. And if you're following me, check out my eBay store, Finish Line Hobbies. It'll be in the comments listed below. These will all be listed in there. USS Lionfish summary, probably about 20 to 30. Um, also the Titanic, awesome. However, I looked and it was started. So, but it, it, it's still there. It still has the instructions. The basic hull was started, so it's not that bad. These don't bring a lot of money though. The Titanic's not a sought after model kit. Um, most of the time, these usually sell for about 15 bucks if you're lucky, especially if it's been started. They just don't have a whole lot of value. These are really cool. I'm gonna take these down. Cuddy Sark Vintage Model Kit from Ravel. Even comes with a map. You can tell it's old by the box art, the map, but it's all there. Don't know the comps on this, but I'm assuming I've sold models like this before from Ravel. They bring in somewhere around usually 20, 20 to 30. And then a Spanish Galleon. These are really cool to build, easy to build. Ravel model ships don't always bring as much as some of the other brands, but still pretty cool. Pretty awesome, really neat. They are good sellers though, they just don't bring a ton of money. And check that out, Telepon. Is that cool or what? So Telepong is an old uh, video game, one of the first console home video game systems. However, there is no game system inside. We have a uh, Harley Davidson motorcycle. Um, this is, a, well, I believe it's a um, police motorcycle model. I think this was pre-built. It doesn't look like a kit. And then we have a Ford Bronco in pieces. So, Ford Bronco is, uh, most of the pieces are in here, but it's seen better days. That's still worth about maybe, maybe $10 at the most, five to 10 bucks, not a whole lot. But to a model builder that can restore it and put it back together, it's worth it. So the Telepong box is still worth about 20 bucks, believe it or not. 
It is a, it's actually in very nice shape. It's not really damaged. You have the tape pull over here a little, but it's still a really great piece just to display, just to put up. Pretty awesome, you know, if you're looking for a nice shelf piece and you're a gamer, that's definitely the way to do it. And then we have a P51 Mustang large scale from MPC, which is pretty awesome. This is pretty cool. Check this out. Uh, it was started, but not that bad. The body hasn't been start, uh, started. He did work on the engine, but he actually did a pretty nice job. Look at that. He actually did a pretty good job building the engine. So it looks good. It wasn't, um, wasn't built terribly bad at all. These are actually pretty simple too. And the great thing is, there are the instructions. I don't see any decals. Sometimes they are mixed in, ah, see? Sometimes they're mixed in the, the best place of the decals is in the manual, and oftentimes you'll find them in the manual. That is so cool. That's awesome. Um, hope you guys are enjoying this discovery here. Um, it did come with comic books too, believe it or not. So I'll show some of the comics. Nothing too crazy. There's no major keys. So comic books are about condition. There's some older DC. That's kind of cool. War, uh, the Warlord number annual number one. You know, most of these books, Green Arrow one and two, they're dollar to a few dollars a piece. Nothing too crazy. The things that came in the lot from the comics that I really like, and these are actually much harder to find. Look at this. Conan the Barbarian. These are magazine comics, and these are from quite a while ago. These are from the early 80s. This is kind of weird. Look, James Earl Jones on the tube card. What's that all about? <laughs> so on the tube, uh, Panini, Panini, I can't quite tell that. James Earl Jones, oh, it's a Panini Americana card. So some, some type of card around based on celebrities. It's probably not really worth anything. Stuff like that is usually never worth anything. More Savage Sword of Conan. These are pretty awesome. I have someone that buys this stuff for me. These are probably worth about five bucks a piece. Sometimes they can be worth 10 to 15. Older, the better. Condition is everything. Uh, there was some pretty cool Star Wars items in here too. These are so cool. So here's a Return of the Jedi from 1983, official collector's book. I'll show you guys what it looks like on the inside. This is awesome. Return of the Jedi. Wow, check that out. Is that awesome or what? All photo guide. Sound effects, talks about the making of the movie. Some neat pictures. Wow, these are so, I'm a, I'm a huge, oh, look at that, Princess Leia. Ooh, check that out. Carrie Fisher. Show that a little bit better. With Jabba. Love me some Star Wars. Oh my God, I'm a, love Star Wars to death. Star Wars, Spawn, Spider-Man, the three, three S's. Those are my, that's my, that's my things I look for. Pretty awesome. Don't know how much I was worth. Probably comps out at about, most of these like uh, collector items, movie journals kind of things. You know, they probably, they made like a million of these back then. So it's probably worth maybe 10 to 20 bucks at the most. Empire Shirts Back. And this is more of like a kiddie book. Nothing special. It's all this, oh, they took the stickers out. What? Come on. <laughs> and then here's the, here's what really got my eye on the lot. Check this out. Star Wars number 39. This is retail, uh, retailer edition. No, newsstand because has the barcode. It makes the ones without the barcode are not worth nearly as much. Um, I don't know. I know number four can be worth money, which I'm actually missing from my collection, my run, so this worked out perfect. I don't even have that one. Here's number six, and number seven, and I needed number eight. So these are really cool. These newsstand editions with the barcode, you know, without it, it could be a $5 book, $10 tops. With the, with the barcode, it jumps up to 15 to 30 a piece. So, that was awesome. That was so epic. 
every time I see Star Wars stuff, unless it's like cheapy, store-bought, like Target or Walmart stuff, I'm all over it. Look at that. Little story. Empire Strikes Back. Oh. So sometimes stuff like that you can sell individually. As a set, it might do better. Some of the other comics, these are Christian-based books, which they're not bad. They're actually really good to read from uh, the Crusaders. Very good. These are made in the uh, 70s, actually. So I'll show these a little bit better. They're really not worth a whole lot because they made a ton of them. But they're pretty cool. Good stories to read. You know, definitely worth reading. So, pretty awesome stuff. I read partial, I have this one already, I read part of it, it was actually really good. These are really not worth much. The whole stack, I'd be lucky if I get 10 bucks for the whole stack. They're just, they made a ton of them and they're not, I mean, it's not Spider-Man. <laughs> if I had Spider-Man books from the same era, that stack would be worth hundreds. And here's some gold key, Korak, Son of Tarzan. Nothing too crazy, it's not really worth a whole lot. Some marble stuff mixed in. It's like a five dollar book, maybe. Really not really worth much. Howard the Duck 25, not really worth much either. Maybe a dollar or two if I'm lucky. It's a it's kind of beat up, it's a reader quality book. Now these are worth a little bit. Sergeant Rock from DC. They're war-based. You sell them as a lot typically. Rock the Prophecy, that's a newer book. Very new. Probably in, we've made in the last uh, five to ten, five to eight years, maybe. Some older Sergeant Rock. Anything without a cover is pretty worthless. Not really worth anything. I mean, kind of fun to maybe look through a little bit, but not real. Unless it's like a uber rare key from the 60s. Yeah. And here's a book that would have been worth a decent amount. Look at that. Amazing Spider-Man number 52. It is a very low grade reader quality book. Now, what would someone pay for this? I've sold number 52 before, worth quite a bit. In this condition, it's maybe a 10 to $20 book if I'm lucky, unfortunately. Someone would buy this just so they can read the interior. So the inside of the book is called interior work, interior art, and then you have cover art on the outside. So while the outside might look beat up, the interior is probably fine. Still a fun book to just have to be able to read, so. You have Enemy Ace, Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man, not worth a whole lot. Still cool though, it's about a $5 book maybe. Batman number 195, that's worth a few dollars. Most of these are in reader quality shape, which means they have been read, handled, they haven't been in a bag and board. None of these are bagged and boarded hardly. So that means that they have not been properly protected over time. We have some more. Old Superman, Lois Lane, 102. Some of these could be keys, I'm not sure. You know, uh, the key comic means that something significant happened that makes it worth more money. So another old action comic, that one's kind of beat to death. That is number 333. So action comics has been a continuous print since the early 50s, late 40s, I believe. So, um, like there's number 392, but it's in really nice shape. So, uh, Werewolf by Night, which is really hard to find, number six. I do have a buyer for these already. Um, I, and then I have a buyer for the Conan stuff. So see, these books are pretty awesome, and whoop, everything decided to slide. That's what happens when you get the uh, these Avery covers. Everything slides off each other. So there's your Conan books right there. These are actually in really nice shape. King Conan number eight, number 10. Most of these King Conans and Conan low numbers, they're worth about five to 10 bucks a piece maybe. Um, something like this, see Tarzan of the Apes. It the covers off and it just beat to death. It's not, it's not worth anything. Like, if, when I run my live comic book sale, which actually, if you're watching, is every um, every Saturday afternoon on Facebook, and look me up, Paladin Comics, like the night, just like our name is on our YouTube channel. So Tarzan of the Apes, 
I usually give stuff that, like this away. I don't necessarily want to just throw it away. I'll give it to somebody just so they can have it. Because I don't, I don't like to sell that sort of stuff. And then we have a bunch of Red Sonia, which is pretty awesome. I had number one, I did sell it. I had a, um, an acquaintance, someone that buys from me, and he saw it when I went through the lot, and he said I have to own it. Let's see, here's a nice run of one through four of a more red, red Sonia Modern book. So, these are all dynamite comics. They're not really worth a whole lot. Here's another Red Sonia, the Marvel, which are pretty cool. Another more modern Conan books. These are pretty awesome too. Jungle Girl from Dynamite. Awesome artwork. Not worth really much at all. They have hardly anything. And then we have some other items. We have a whole stack of Archie books. I'll show those. Richie Rich Archie books. These you sell as a lot. So they're not really worth much. The whole stack right here, probably worth about 20 to 30. Because they're, they're in really nice shape, actually. So they're, normally they're not worth much, but if they're in really nice shape, they're worth a little. Um, some unusual gems that you guys are probably not aware of, unless you're in the hobby or know about it. But this is Tamiya. So Tamiya is a Japanese model manufacturer, and these are the vintage catalogs from back in the day. So I'll show you what they look like. So this is from 1977, right there, 1977. They have not changed the format of their catalogs since then. They're so beautiful, and it showcases all their new products. They make military mo they make military plastic models, automobiles, RC cars. They did 116 scale military. So there is, so these are worth good money. That is worth probably about 30. And you have 19, uh, this is, what year is this one? 1976. Probably worth about the same. Old Revell 1976-77 model kit catalog. That's probably worth about five to 10. Lindbergh, not so much sought after, but still really awesome. Probably about five. Look at this old monogram catalog. This lot was just absolutely incredible, guys. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. I was just floored. 1976 catalog. That's probably worth about 10. You figure, and most of the catalogs are worth about 10 a piece. Uh, this is probably Minicraft. Yep, Minicraft models, which is unusual. That's kind of hard to find. And then we have Entex, which I've only seen maybe once or twice in the past. They do a lot of model ships and other military items. Probably worth about 10. Here, oh, here's another monogram. That's cool. NPC Aurora. Ooh, that's going to be worth money because Aurora doesn't exist. They don't exist anymore with plastic models. I think Polar Lights bought them out a long time ago. So they still use the name, but they don't exist as an independent company. AMT from 1977. And the dust just keeps on showing up. I don't know, Treasures of the Library of Congress. I don't know what that's all about. Ah, it's just a... That's not really worth anything. And neither is that. America's National Parks. Ooh, look at that. MPC from 1978. Look with, with the Hulk on the front. That's cool. And then here is a uh, 1985 official program to the um, World Games of the Death in Los Angeles. That's actually kind of cool. That's pretty neat. I'm figuring that's got to be worth at least a good, probably five to ten bucks. You figure most publications are worth five to ten bucks of any significance. And then of course rarity, price goes up depending upon rarity. Now, I'm not going to take these all out of the box, but check this out military models 135th scale in the back these are 148th in the front most of these like the sherman the um the, these are 172nd the real tiny ones um 
Um, you have helicopters in here. The, the larger tanks will pull in probably about 50 to 60. The smaller vehicles here, these are actually all 148. Yes, these are not 135th. These are 135th, I believe. Kind of off now. Actually, I think the I think these are one. I think they're these are actually I think they're all 135th, I believe. Anyway, these will pull in anywhere from uh, and the tanks will pull in more. They'll pull in about 50 to 60. The trucks are probably pulling about 20 at the most, maybe a little over. Helicopters are probably pulling about the same amount. So these are pretty cool. So you're probably wondering at this point, how much did I pay for this whole lot? And that's a good question. And I'll tell you, um, I paid about 2 270 for everything. And you figure after everything's done between the cars, comics and the plastic models and everything else there's going to be somewhere north of i figure it's probably going to be at least 900 to 1200 dollars worth of sales out of the lot easily now when i made my offer i made it based on the fact that there's a lot of work that goes into this so if you've never been a reseller it does take a lot of time to prep to sell something picture it you know get it ready there's a lot of work involved but if you've never done it it's always good to watch what someone else does or ask questions or talk to somebody that does it that way you can have an appreciation and then you understand how things work and then you get your feet wet well here's some shorty books like that mystery comics digest of twilight zone the Archie books don't really bring much. You usually sell them as a lot. That lot right there will probably pull in about $30 to $50 because they're actually in really nice shape. And the Twilight Zone book alone will probably pull in about $10 to $20 because it's an unusual format. You usually don't see these, the gold key smaller format. So what a good investment, right? You paid $0.50 cents back then. It's probably worth about $20 now. <laughs> so if you bought like... A hundred thousand of these. Could you imagine the money that you would make now? Okay. So taking a look at some other items, we are getting through the lot. Ooh, look at this. If you've been watching this long, you're in for a treat. Here are some awesome vintage toys and some modern toys. So we have Sky 12 from Arizona. It's a friction toy helicopter. It's kind of cool. Probably really not worth much, maybe five bucks or something. Now, I haven't run comps on any of the toys in here, so if you guys look it up, look at that pickups. It's a Les, uh, Les Paul Epiphone from BB King, a little replica. It's actually really cool. Check that out. All of this will be in the eBay store at one point. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves from, from 1990, 1991. This was made a while ago. Yep, 1991. Look at that. Still new one card. Isn't that awesome? Indiana Jones. Look at that. New one card. Action figure. And this is also from the early 90s, I believe. No, it's not actually. It's 2008. So it's a kind of like a re-release of the movie characters. <coughs> Look at that Rambo 50 caliber machine gun. So this is made by Coleco, which is pretty awesome. So it's a 50 caliber machine gun model. Look at that. And look, it's still sealed. Holy cow. Is that awesome or what? Check that out. Talk about your throwback from the, from the 80s. Coleco, this has got to be made in the 80s. 1988. Holy dang. Look at that. 34 years old. Still in the box. Who doesn't like Rambo? Then we have the AT uh, who's this? The AT&T guy, I believe. No, Cox Communications. He's not worth nothing. He's cute. Could just be a donatable item. And then we have these really cool, these are made in the UK. They're service trucks. A little bit of die cast. 
almost like a super duper fancy Hot Wheels. So Atlas tire truck, Atlas tires. I figure most of the UK made scale trucks like this are worth anywhere from, typically anywhere from 20 to 20 to 30, right around there, somewhere in that ballpark. They're not made in China. These are much higher grade. Um, Force pulling a motor oil, motor oil can cart. It's kind of ironic, actually. For motor cars, Standard Oil Company. That's awesome. Oh, and this is really cool. Standard Oil. Look at that. Try to get the glare off of it. So neat. And there's more in here. Oh, that's really cool. Crown gasoline. So they're all oil-based oil tankers or gas trucks that's pretty cool so yeah you figure these are probably worth about maybe 20 30 ish somewhere in that ballpark you know there's a hot wheels that mobile that's kind of cool uh, those are worth these are worth about maybe five to ten i've sold them before and then you have a road champs just a cheap toy this is a good time of year to donate toys, by the way. If you have anything to get rid of that's not really worth much, but you know a child can enjoy, I'm gonna get rid of it. And then they have some um, keychains. I don't know what this, what the heck that is. It <laughs> doesn't look like anything bad though, at least. Then look at a Honda modified. Apparently you can modify the car. That's a CRX too. That's actually really cool. Check that out. Wow. My wife used to have a Honda CRX back in the day little horse don't know what that goes to and some cheapy die cast nothing special there a clash of the titans action figure from uh from a while ago actually 1980 wow holy cow is it really 1980 yeah made in the no this can't be 1980 i guess it is this is 1980, made in the Philippines. I mean, it looks it looks old enough to be from the 80s. There's no barcode on it. Yeah, that is pretty cool. And then is uh, Thalo, Captain of the Guards. It looks like it has been glue resealed, but it's still kind of cool. And we have the card for another figure, but, but no figure. No figure. And I was gonna say that's Evil Knievel, but it's not some other dude I think it's uh, these are old old um, old uh, like plush action figures old plush action figures uh, old plush figures these were from I can't really read that made in Taiwan eh. so they're not worth anything not really worth anything here's a loose truck from those same models made in also made in uh, England and then Del Dixie Pecans what's that all about they're like little cups I've never seen anything like this before it's like little like little ceramic cups or something Dixie Pecans well, what's that all about no apparent explanation. 1952. Wait, this is 1937. It says Pat Oil, made in Chicago. Ditsy Pecans. So I'm not quite sure what the deal is there. Ditsy Pecans, made in 1957. You know, age doesn't always mean things are worth money. I'll just let you guys know that up front. <laughs> People go, man, this is old. It's like, yeah, it's old, but no one really cares. Look at that Lincoln Logs keychain. That's kind of cool, actually. Probably really not worth much. You know, if it was sealed, it'd probably be worth, worth like maybe five bucks if you're, if you're lucky. Stuff like that, little things, the doll. I'll just make a pile of stuff and donate it. Um, 
we were donating quite a bit to uh, Salvation Army for the longest time, but we've since uh, looked for other. St. Vincent de Paul is one of our favorite, actually, to donate to. Very good charitable organization. So we try to donate to organizations that we know give back to the community. We do donate. We donate to Goodwill, but not as much as we want to. I mean, we try. We do out of convenience. Let's put it that way. Last box I'm going to show you guys. Alright guys, here we have the uh, last two items I'm going to show you guys this evening from this launch to wrap up our first video for one of many hauls. One of many, 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 many hauls. So this is all paint. Modeler's paint that came from the estate too. These are all testers, model masters. The way you can tell they're good, you gotta listen for the paint inside. Is it loose? Most of these are, which is great. Some of them are dried out, but these weren't cheap. You know, when they were bought, they're four bucks a piece. And there's a lot here. There's probably well over a hundred of them here. So, and then these are Tamiya, Tamiya acrylics. These are really great paints. They flow so nice and the colors are so vivid. So this tray, I would just sell locally. Not a whole lot. I'd probably do the whole tray for 20 bucks, maybe, maybe 30 at the most. Just depends. I'd have to go through and just kind of shake each one, you know, get rid of the ones that are um, no longer, that have dried up. So, but all of this is still very usable. In fact, I used the flat black out of it last night, which was over here. <laughs> so I already used one actually. And the last box from the hall is model trains. Ooh, model trains. Bachman stuff to uh, be exact. Really awesome. There's a whole set in here and there's a, a bunch of new and box Bachman trains. Look at that, how beautiful that is. This is a uh, John Bull, which I've seen before in pictures. John Bull, um, Locomotive, HO scale, new in the box, item number 41-525. I pull up comps on this. It's probably worth somewhere, it, it's gotta be somewhere in the 50 to 100 range. It's still new in the box. It's old school Bachman, which is really, really nice. And then somehow, oh, a Bachman little guy get in there. There are some really cool trains in here though. Look at this. So this is, there's the coal tender. This is the Crescent Limited Southern. It is a very, very heavy model train. Uh, it says, it says the Crescent line has been crafted on the traditional HO scale. This perfect precision uh, cast models hand assembled to finish to the highest standards of quality. Hmm. And it has its own base too, so look at how beautiful. I want to be really careful with this. I don't want to damage it. It's just so beautiful. Look at that. Wow. I mean, what a beauty, huh? And it's really heavy. I mean, it is definitely a, a very um, substantial piece compared to the ones I had when I was little. This is absolutely incredible and I'm being as delicate as I can with it. It is out of box and dusty, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it just shows so nicely and it even has its own base, a, a wooden base, no doubt. Look at the wooden base it goes on. It needs to be cleaned. I'll, pull, look, I'll put a note in the um, comments or if I can in the video of the uh, value that I found. And you guys will probably look that up before me anyway. And I've been like on a kind of a model train uh, hitch lately because of um, 
<clears throat> Locker Nuts out in California. They bought that huge lot, that storage locker for a dollar with all the uh, model trains, which is so cool to watch. So if you haven't seen, you should move over there and watch them. After, of course, you've watched my, me. Here's another model train. Wow, with coal tender. Um, it also is HO scale. And it is very heavy duty. So look at the bottom. Pretty awesome. Very beautiful. It needs a cleaning, but I'm not sure who the make is. But it is really, really nice. It's harder to find the make when something's out of the box, of course. But there is more in here. This one box just has so many model trains in it. It's so cool. So this is more of scenery stuff. So electric trains, motorized accessories. So let's see what's in here. Oh, oh, they're just two boxes on top of each other. So these are, these are the, oh, these are the John Bull cars that go with the train. Oh, wow. That is cool. Check that out. Isn't that neat? Look at that. Look at the detail on that. These are really nice. Wow. And we have, I haven't gone through any of this in the bottom, so I have no idea what's in here. Here's some kind of display piece. Looks like wooden, oh, they're wooden benches. Look at that. Like little park benches at a train stop, at a train station. That's cool. Pullman uh, observation. Oh, cab interior pieces. So these go on the interior of the, um, the train car. There are seats. Oh, that's cool. Um, and then we have, what is this? It's a check box, but it's obviously not checks. It is, oh, a, uh, a car. Oh, this is actually pretty neat. It feels pretty heavy. It feels almost, it is plastic, but the door feels like it's metal. That's cool. Probably not worth a whole lot. Usually used cars that are broken are not worth much. Um, still looking through here for you guys. There is Tyco and Lifelike. Tyco Caboose. Probably worth about five, ten bucks at the most. Um, here is a super cool, wow. Ooh, check this out. This is awesome. Wow. Lifelike powered locomotive. Check that out with a headlight. Union Pacific, that is so neat. Still on the box. Of course, the price tag's off, so we have no idea what the price was. It's model number 8388, which is pretty cool. It's old school lifelike too. So it's probably made here in the US back in the day. Wow, that is really neat. Let me move this aside a little bit. Getting running out of room on the table. Uh, there's also another box in the bottom called Red uh, Red Ball. So it's Red Ball. And let's see what's inside. What is inside of this? Uh, looks like it's a it's a train you actually put together. I've never seen that before. Look at that. It's got the windows. That's what it looks like. Here's the metal top. The end pieces, the bottom is there. There's possibly the interior. Wow, that's really cool. I've never seen a, and here's the instructions on how to build it. It's a business car. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, you build it. That's awesome. I've never seen that. Plan number 140. Wow. I have never seen a model train that you actually build most of the they come built that's what i've always seen some other loose trains train tracks train tracks are never worth anything it's the cars that people want because most people that want these already have a track to put them on if you live out here in arizona or if you visit at the mccormick railroad park in scottsdale they have a working model train display you can walk through and the guys work on their equipment there it's a huge interactive display it's really it's awesome it's its own building that's how big it is there's nothing else like it anywhere nearby 
See, that feels kind of substantial. It's a metal bottom, I think that's why. Usually these are weighted so that the cars stay on the track better. All right, let's see what else we have. Oh, another little locomotive. Oh, look at that. That is pretty cool. Another checkbox with something inside. Oh, more train cars. Oh, they're trolleys. These are more trolleys, I believe. Yeah. There's a trolley right there. That's cool. Most of these are probably worth loose, maybe five bucks. You would sell the cars as a, as a set together. You always sell stuff like that together. That's the best way to sell it off. Here's one more box called Varney Model Railways. And it just has one box car inside in pieces. Not really worth much. That sort of stuff you try to lot it out. And here is more track. Nothing special there. Yep, it's all track inside. So that was a really cool box. Guys. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm not a huge model train person, but I'm familiar with them enough to where I know what I'm buying. Not completely, but I have a vague idea as to what I'm looking at. So do you buy track on its own? Never. Unless you're building your own model railway, then you would. But for the most part, you don't. You, the money is in the cars. The money is definitely in the locomotives. These are so neat. Wow, pretty awesome. I'm excited to find out what this train is worth. Wow, that is so beautiful. Look at that. You guys probably already know. If you want to make a comment on there, let me know. I'll run comps and I'll put it in the... Uh, in the information below and I'll put a link to my eBay store where all of these items will eventually be. If you have an extreme interest in one of them, you're welcome to message me on Facebook under, Pal under uh, Paladin Comics or Finish Line Hobbies, preferably Paladin Comics. So that wraps it up guys for that lot. Um, I will start documenting each one that I get and I'll keep you guys posted. And thanks for watching, and make sure you hit that like button and the follow and follow us, please. You'll get updates, and we're going to do videos at least once a week or every other week at the latest. So um, thank you for watching, and peace out.